So Walker, um, I guess we should start with the kind of the when of this of this decision. You you decided a while back first that you were going to come back, and then obviously the world kind of ended. So take us through your timetable about when things started to shift and when, when you kind of knew that this was the the choice you wanted to make. Um, yeah. So I mean, obviously going into last season. Um, there was like thoughts of if I played well enough, I'd be able to go um, and kind of declare. And obviously, season got cut short, um, got injured, went through that season. Um, after the season, it was, I mean, it was pretty clear to me that I wanted to come back and I needed to come back. Um, needed to for football, for sure. Um, and like wanted to like, be able to come back and compete another year since that year just got kind of ruined for me, um, you know, early on. Um, and then also being able to, to have a chance to graduate was also um, a big pull on me to, to come back. Um, so then, so I made that choice then. We go through this year. Um, and then well, we get to spring ball and then we, you know, hear about the coronavirus stuff, get sent home. And I mean, at least on the team, we were like, all right, like worst case scenario, we won't play spring ball. And like, whatever, we'll be back soon. Then obviously that's gone how it's gone. And we didn't get back until um, July. And then got back, you know, we're working to come back as best we can, like trying to do everything right um, to give ourselves a chance of the season. And then early August, we get the news that we're not gonna be able to play this season, at least not in the fall. Um, and so I was like, shoot, like, what's what's to do now like what am i what, what's the right decision now um and so initially it was like a lot of people calling me like family and then like talking to the coaches just like initial thoughts um and i kind of told everyone i want to just like take some time and just like process it all like see how things like unfolded um so i kind of just like stayed on campus just like stayed like working on stuff but i'm um, just kind of chilled out a little bit and just kind of like thought about it myself and then uh, probably a week, a week went by and I got on the phone with Coach Shaw um, and he was the one who, me and him, my decision was going to be based a lot on like what he said because ultimately like me and my parents don't know anything more than he does. Like he's the one who has the connections to the NFL. He's the one who's been here and done that with other players. And so his, you know, opinion meant a lot. Um, and he believed that, you know, I had enough film out there and that I was ready enough um, to take that next step. And just with, and then on my side of things, it was just with so much uncertainty of, all right, now the season's not happening when it was supposed to, you know, who's to say that it's going to happen in, you know, January, how it's supposed to, who's to say it would happen in the spring, how it's supposed to. And then, you know, who's to say the NFL is going to even react on that when other conferences are playing and there was just so much unknown. And I think with all of us, you know, we've been living this, this space with so much unknown for the past, you know, six months um, since all this coronavirus happened where you don't really know what your future looks like. You can't really make plans. It's everything so up in the air day to day. Um, and it was exciting to me to kind of take the next step and be like, all right, this is what my life's going to look like for the next six months. I'm going to leave. I'm going to start training and preparing for the NFL draft and preparing for the combine. Um, instead of um, staying, there was the opportunity that I was going to be able to play with my teammates again, um, which is obviously a huge draw, but it was so much unknown. And what does that look like? You know, where am I going to train for the next few months when I don't have a place to stay on campus? Um, when are we going to get back to training as a team again? When are we actually going to play? What would the start date look like? What's the NFL going to like? There's just so many more question marks. Um, and I think all of us could agree that it's, it's been tiring these past few months of living in this world of so many question marks. It was nice to kind of be able to pave my own path and, and make that decision be like, this is where I'm going. This is the path I want to take with my life. And so um, that, was, that was a big part of it, is just being able to kind of take control over what the next few months are going to look like for myself um, and give myself the best opportunity to hopefully go as high as I can in the draft. Yeah, I'd, I'd imagine in some respects this was a difficult decision, as, as you just hinted at, but I imagine in some other respects perhaps this was an easy decision to make. What, what made this decision difficult? What made this decision easy, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, I would say 
difficulties was just like accepting the fact that I wasn't going to get like the last kind of finale of the season, the senior season. Um, I was going to get to play with some of these guys who I've been, you know, wanting to play with, specifically like playing with Davis. Um, I never, I didn't get a shot to play with them last year. I've been dying to play with them since, you know, we've been on campus together um, since I saw them throwing in high school. Um, and so I was really excited about what, especially our offense was going to be able to do, what our offensive line unit was going to be able to do, especially with me and Drew and Foster all, you know, coming in as seniors. Um, so that was definitely the toughest part was accepting that, all right, maybe, maybe that's not going to be able to happen. Um, and maybe choosing to leave that is going to be the right choice. Um, I don't, not too much of it was easy except for just, Talk, once I talked to Coach Shaw and kind of got his uh, perspective on it, his um, view on what he thought was best for me, that, that eased me a little bit. It didn't make the decision that much easier, but it gave me a little bit of peace of mind that, okay, like, this is the right choice. I'm not just kind of going on a whim here. Um, I have someone who's done this many times before, and um, I respect a lot and has, you know, steered me right all the way up to this point, you know, telling me that this is the right choice. So um, that was definitely a huge uh, a burden off my back. Walker, I'm wondering with uh, you and your teammates, because there are other guys on the team who are probably thinking along the same lines of you. And what has that been like to talk amongst each other about what's best for yourself, what's best for maybe the group and, and coming to the decision amongst yourselves? Um, yeah, I mean, initially, talks were not really, uh, I'd say that about like personal, what's best for me. It was just kind of like, what the hell? Like, I can't believe this has happened. Like, what what's it going to look like for us as a team? Like, where are things going? It was just kind of such a shell shocking moment to be like, yeah, this thing you've been preparing for for the past eight months, it's it's no longer. Um, and like for me, it's been like a year of preparation since I've been hurt. Um, as soon as I got hurt, you know, Northwestern last year, it was like, all right, what's next on my like mind? Um, the next thing is going to be, you know, the 2020 season, 2019, 2020 season, um, or 2020, 2021, sorry. Um, and then to get that kind of just like swapped out from under you was just shell shock for all of us. It was a lot. Sorry, we're gonna call. It was a lot of just uh, you know figuring out this next step, and then I mean a lot of people just kind of like went their separate ways. So I guess like long story short, there wasn't too much talk individually to each other about like what's next. Um, obviously, the vast majority of our team is coming back, and like they aren't really in that position. There's a few of us who are, um, but everyone's position so different. Um, everyone has different things for me like it made it easier that I was graduating in the fall um, and sorry this thing keeps going off but I mean for other guys who who aren't going to be graduating in the fall it's a little tougher decision um, for guys who feel like maybe they need another year um, of tape or things like that that's just different per guy um, and obviously coach Shaw is the one who kind of can know everyone's position and understand and give a, a give his view on what's best for each of us. And I think that's where most of us kind of went to was, you know, us talking to each other isn't going to do much. As And even us talking to our family, like, they can give us their thoughts, but ultimately, like, none of us have been in this position. None of us really know what we're talking about. So I think for each of us, it was, um, like, as soon as this all happened, we all lined up, you know, time to talk to Coach Shaw, especially all the seniors. Um, and I think a lot of people are going to be really reliant upon what he believes is best for us. So, um, as you as you look, like maybe not back, but I'm kind of curious in terms of legacy in yeah. your mind. Your class came in with a lot of expectation, a lot of high hopes, and a lot of things out of your control kind yeah. of stopped that from from finishing the way you wanted to. As yeah. as you leave the program. Just talk about the way your class is looking at, at the way things are. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely unfortunate. And as you said, like we, this class came into Stanford with you know, a lot of hype around us. We had a lot of highly touted guys coming in. Um, and that wasn't the usual for Stanford um, in years past. 
And we were excited about that and kind of excited to, you know, get our chance to lead this team. Um, and as we got older, even last year, um, it kind of felt like, all right, you know, now we're getting some momentum. And then obviously I got hurt and many other guys got injured last year and kind of just took the wind out of our sails. And then so, you know, looking forward, we're like, all right, this is our year. Like, we're the seniors, we're the leaders on this team. We're going to have, you know, Davis at quarterback. We'll have me, Drew, um, and Foster at O-line. We'll have Osiris at wide receiver. Uh, we'll have a bunch of guys on defense that are you know, older guys with Curtis and Malik and Paulson. And it just felt like the pieces were kind of getting put together to have a really special season. Um, then to get this kind of like wiped out um, like it did and everyone just kind of in a mode of like, all right, well, what's next for each of us? Um, it definitely is a little sour. Um, it's not, it wasn't ideal. Certainly wasn't what, what we planned or anyone could have planned for. Um, to get your season wiped out by a pandemic, but it is what it is. And, and I think at the end of it, we'll look back and, and be fond of, you know, what we were able to do and how much we worked together. And it's, it's hard because we can't really let the, allow the, the world to kind of see what we could do this season. Um, but I mean, we all know how much we worked, uh, how much time we put into this, how many hours we, we worked hard together and, uh, we built relationships that are going to last for the rest of our lives, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's definitely wasn't it wasn't how we planned it to be. Uh, wasn't what we imagined uh, this last season to be. But as far as the Stanford experience as a whole, we can't. I mean, I, I can't speak for everyone else, but I would assume you know none of us could really have asked for more. How much attention have you paid to the uh, mock drafts? Um. I mean, not much. They they go back and forth so often. They they move as the wind blows. So I mean, the mock draft that'll be coming out today won't be anywhere near what it looks like next week or the week after that. So it's just kind of wasting your time to look at it and just kind of he's either going to build your you know confidence up or shoot it down. And ultimately, those guys that are writing most of these mock drafts aren't going to be the ones who are making the decision. So um, just like anything else, um, just like it. it it's similar to just being in the season almost. You can't look at the rankings every single week and just be like, uh, you know, Coach Shaw and everyone always talked about just kind of going day by day and doing your work. And if you put the work in, eventually you'll you know, bear the fruits of that, that hard work. And so that's kind of where I'm at. It's just kind of going day by day, doing what I'm supposed to be doing each day, um, you know, working hard and training for these next few months as well as finishing out school. Um, and then, you know, we'll see, we'll, We'll see where it all ends up, um, you know, in, I guess in April next year. Walker, I'm curious, what are your thoughts on uh, the room you leave behind? And you've yeah. talked about, they've, you were excited about how the group was going to come together. And I'm especially curious about your thoughts about Walter and, and the other young guys he's now going to be competing with um, yeah. to replace you. Um, yeah. Your thoughts, your eval of this group going forward. Yeah, I mean, I would – my eval on it is that there, there's a lot of really young talent that I think is going to be really, really good. I mean, I think some of these guys, like you said, Walter, is going to be really good. I think um, one of the new freshmen, Miles, I think Miles is going to be really, really good. Um, but I think all of them have a chance to be really special. Um, and one thing I told them all, you know, as I was leaving was just that – just keep working. Like, don't, you know, take this time off because you don't know when they're going to be playing again. And I think really last year helped them solidify that in their minds because none of those kids really thought they were going to be starting last year. Um, and then they all got thrown into it. So it's definitely easy for them. And they understand that you never really know where this thing's going to take you. You don't know when your numbers can be called upon. You have to be ready. Uh, but I think – and that was such a hard part about leaving too. So I was just so excited to, to be working with these guys in practice um, and me help them as well as, you know, they would help me and we'd get better together and just kind of build a really strong O-line room. And it's stunt that we didn't really get that opportunity, but I think some of these guys are going to be really special. And as they keep growing and getting stronger, it's really going to help them. And then I think this time is really going to help some of these freshman O-linemen as well. They're just coming in because they didn't get the, the normal summer to train and learn and then come into the season. So now that they're getting some more uh, you know, months in before the season will actually start, 
I think this will give them a better opportunity to uh, learn the playbook. If they, you know, if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, get stronger um, and you know, give them a better chance to get on the field um, whenever the season comes around. And you talked in general about training and finishing up your classes. I'm just yeah. curious, like, what is your days like? And, and are you going to be doing that from Stanford physically or are you home or what, how, how's that going to work out? Oh, for you? no. So I, I am in Pensacola, Florida right now. I'm training at the Exos down here. Um, and so right now it's, I train in the mornings and then kind of like early afternoons. So like 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. And then school, the helpful thing is that I'm on central time here and then all my classes are in Pacific time. So a normal like, you know, two o'clock class is now four o'clock. So pretty much all my classes are afternoon to night. Um, and then, so I pretty much train from 9 a.m. to like three-ish. And then I'll do my classes like Monday through Thursday and then like homework and stuff, but I'm not in, I'm only in three classes right now. Cause I like, that, that's all I needed to graduate. Um, so it's not too much of a load, but, um, training is definitely a lot and I'm still kind of getting a handle of it and getting, uh, accustomed to you know, a new lifestyle, living in a new place, just kind of get my feet settled. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of my day to day right now. Last calendar year, um, uh, injury team struggled pandemic, uh, mm -hmm. challenges, high points. What have you learned about yourself throughout this whole last calendar year? Yeah, I mean, it's been a wild year, like, looking back on it. And that was, that was something me and Coach Shaw, like, discussed and, and talked about just kind of reflecting on the past year. And then his kind of opinion on it was just how much I've grown. And, and it gave me a chance to kind of realize how much, you know, from the injury – kind of having to like take a step back and be like, all right, you're not going to play this year. You're going to play next year. Like, let's just get to work now. And working all this time and really changing uh, my like mentality of work and really enjoying it and, and learning to love to work out, learn, like loving to learn to train and love to change my body um, was really exciting and fun and definitely a huge development for me. Um, and it really just helped me grow both mentally too, realizing that when you go through any injury, it's so slow and, and it's such a day by day thing where you're not going to see growth each day. You know, you'll go a month to two months and it feels the exact same, but then suddenly two weeks later, you're like, holy shit, like this is awesome. You know, I can do this. That I couldn't didn't think I was going to be able to do like a month ago. Um, so much doubt, you know, creeps in and then you just kind of block it out and it's, it's a microcosm of life in a way of just attacking each day, um, putting in the work on the, the forefront, and then you know, hopefully we'll, we'll you know, get the results you want at the back end. Um, and then having to do so much of, of my training on the back end and working so much on my own, um, as you know, a lot of the college athletes around the country did, um, really instilled a different type of discipline because uh, usually you have coaches just kind of barking at you, telling you what to do when you're doing everything's wrong. Um, but having to do it on your own and really, you know, be true to yourself and realize that, you know, if I don't do this, I'm not going to be the player I want to be come fall. Um, it really, for me, it, it made me so much more of a professional. And that's what, you know, me and uh, Coach Shaw talked about and, and part of the reason why, you know, we both felt comfortable with me making this next step was it almost had felt like I was a pro for the last you know six months having to be home having to you know figure out the times I was going to train figure out the times I was going to do other things and then scheduling my life out I and mean, having to do a lot of this stuff on my own where all of college most of the time that's that time is put out for you you know you have your schedule and that's made by the football team and, and by your classes um but for the first time really being able to like do it and then work hard and then see that I was doing the right things. I was growing. I was getting stronger. I was getting faster. I was getting better as a football player. I'm um, then coming back right for the season, getting swept out front of you, then kind of looking back and you're like, wow, I really, you know, felt like I was a professional for the past, you know, four months of training and stuff. So that really gave me a lot of confidence too in this decision and, and was just another kind of reflection on how much I've grown because I know, you know, two, three years ago, I would never have 
trusted myself to uh, have trained by myself like I have. I've just learned so much uh, from players and coaches at Stanford that really taught me you know, how to be a professional each and every day. And, um, and you know, that's one of the biggest parts about coming to Stanford that I look back on and, and appreciate. Best moment on the field, uh, coolest moment, maybe away from football at Stanford. Um, best moment on the field. Um, let me think. <sighs> Beating Cal, my like, so the end of my sophomore year was the last game. They got pushed back because of the smoke, and then winning and winning that with uh, some of those seniors that I'd looked up to so much, um, like Bryce and Bobby. And that was that was that was probably. Uh, maybe the coolest moment for me was seeing those guys like hold up the axe and just uh, appreciating, you know, how much work they put in, how much they've helped me. Um, and there's such a build up to that game, and you know, we didn't play as much as we wanted to, but still be able to, to pull it out at the end was that was really cool. You know, coming back in the locker room and, and doing that. Um, best moment off the field. Um, I don't know if I could pin it down to a normal moment. Um, I just say, you know, the collective memories of, you know, living with these guys from freshman year and we all, you know, didn't know what the hell we were doing. We were just kind of during the headlights, figuring it out. Um, and then getting to senior year, we felt like so much control in the program. And um, we were going to be the reason why, you know, we won or we lost. Um, and that growth in between, and all the memories just kind of outside of football, in between it are the other things I'll you know, cherish the most about, about these past you know, three or so years. So you're leaving college football and college sports at a pretty interesting time um, on a number of fronts. Yeah. Some of your teammates are kind of part of a movement that we are United movement that's yeah, asking yeah. for it's asking for a lot of change. Yeah. And so I'm just curious as you leave what are your thoughts on name image likeness? What are your thoughts on, on pay for play? Should you guys get compensated? And what are your thoughts on using your voices to speak out on social matters that are important to you? Yeah, I mean, loaded question, kind of three parts. Name image likeness, I'm a big proponent of us you know, being able to use our name image likeness. It's never really made sense to me why we couldn't. Um, besides just a kind of a, a control thing in ways. Um, pay for play, that's such a more loaded thing where I don't, I understand where my teammates as well as other guys across the country um, have kind of pushed for it. And I understand it. I just don't know how to make that happen in a reasonable way. Um, and that's the biggest issue. And there's been statements of, you know, how to make it happen and, um, some of it is reasonable, some of it maybe not as much. And, and it's, that's the hardest part about this whole thing is figuring out the best way to approach it. And then what was the last, last part of that question? Just, just using your voices to speak oh, out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's been, yeah. And that's one of the coolest parts that's happened kind of in this past year is seeing not only in the NFL and like professional sports in general, but also just in collegiate sports and specifically in college football, seeing everyone, you know, stepping up and using their voices across, you know, their platforms and across the country. Um, that's been something that's really been cool. Um, seeing a lot of my teammates, even like Dylan Bowles is probably the, the biggest shining example of, you know, someone who has stepped up and, you know, know sees himself as, you know, a person who can make a difference. And he is a guy who can make a difference. He's a brilliant kid a lot of great ideas and just kind of use this platform as a Stanford football player um, to go out and talk about um, different, whether it's social issues or COVID, you know, related issues and things like that. Um, and that's just been so cool to see someone that I've been, you know, in my class and working with for so long on, you know, CNN and on, uh, you know, TV, you know, talking about these huge issues and, and at such a young age, but you know, that's why, you come to Stanford to be with guys like that who are going to be leading change. But um, just across the country, I think that's been one of the coolest parts. But this time is, although it's been so tough on the whole country and a lot of these different players, a lot of guys have, um, you know, 
use this 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 tough time and really come out of it um, with a new you know, view on view on the world and view on their place in the world and realizing that you know we have a voice and we can really push for change um, and push for uh, making a difference you know for the better for people who maybe don't have as much of a voice as we do or don't feel they do um, so that's been really cool I think I'm, I'm good. good. You guys? Yeah, I'm good.